So welcome back to the Pick Up the Fort podcast. The boys are back. The boys are more fired up than yeah. ever. And uh, boys, we took a little, a few months off, so we're gonna be getting content out every week. I know we kind of said that last time, but no. this time it's for real. So. Yeah, we boys were busy as shit, and then finally I got back in the gym, like seriously. And I, I wasn't gonna come back on a podcast in the gym a couple days a week. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you gotta establish sure, yourself yeah. in the gym first. So Definitely. I'm back like six days a week or whatever. So finally feel like good enough, back confident in, back enough in to groove. Yeah. To teach other boys about yeah, stuff. So. so we got a few uh, topics today. We're just gonna do two. It's gonna be a bit of a short episode. First, we're gonna talk about um, like why a lot of people don't seem to train their back properly, especially among like new lifters and stuff. Yeah. And then you're gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about uh, my experience on ashwagandha. So it's a new supplement. Like it's heavily out there on social media. We're gonna talk about whether it works. My experience on it and whether you should go about buying it. Yeah. So Matt's Matt's gonna get really sciencey on the back, yeah. and then that, like I've seen a lot, of, a lot of new lifters in the gym, so I think this yeah. is a really crucial topic, honestly, because yeah. a lot of people like the lats is one of the hardest muscles to actually get that mind muscle connection with and yeah, actually yeah, yeah, start yeah. to feel it. So I think we'll start with that. Like, yeah. So um, one of the reasons the lat is very hard is because it does multiple movements. So it immediately rotates your arm and it uh, it adducts your arm. It well, it's your humerus. So this this bone right here in your arm is your humerus. And that's where the lat inserts upon, and then it or originates from uh, down on your ribs and like close to your spine. <laughs> so <clears throat> that being said, since it's got it, since it's such a big flat muscle going up there, that just generally makes it hard to kind of connect with. And then since it has it adducts, medial rotates, and then it extends this arm as well. So when you're like coming back like that, so that makes it really hard to train because you know like if you just have your bicep, all your bicep does is pull up like this. It doesn't do anything other than that. I like to sound like a rotate, but it's it's very easy to see. You can see it. You know what it's doing, and you can kind of connect with it. But when you have your lat, which is on your back, you can't see that when you're training yeah. it. And especially if you don't know exactly what it does, it makes it very hard to like connect with. I find I think one of the reasons nobody grows their lats when they first start in the gym is because mind muscle connection. Yeah. And I think <coughs> I think that if you understand what your lat does as a muscle. And you can kind of connect with it a little more. So, yeah. like, if you're doing a lat pull down, say, and you know that your lat immediately, or not immediately, sorry, adducts your arm, and it's like, okay, good, that's that's it's adducting right there. Instead of like being thinking like it's here or doing something that a lot you see a lot of people on uh, lat pull and like just think the wider they go, the more that they're gonna get. But I mean, really, you can't really apply that much stress to the lat out here as you can in here. And pulling down properly. So. Yeah, there's def definitely different leverages that help you optimize yeah, exactly. your, your gain as well. And like you said, it's one of those complex, complex like body parts. Yeah. And that a lot of newbies when they start, it's underdeveloped, so they can't really feel the mind muscle connection. Because without working out, you're not really hitting the lat as exactly. much as you would yeah, say lats, like your arms or something. Exactly. Like yeah. that's not really you're not really using your lats all the time in your normal day. Like everybody starts in the gym, they have pretty much everybody has. Like, <laughs> visible bicep to some degree yeah and a visible chest to some degree and that's <clears throat> those are the two that most people grow the most yeah because like carrying out normal functions <clears throat> you're gonna train your arms in some exactly capacity. yeah like, train your chest in some like capacity if you work, as well if you work pretty much any job you're gonna use you know you might use like your lower back but you're not really like pulling like this with your lat you're not really gonna use it that much and i think that just it's underdeveloped another one of the main things too i find a lot of newbies try to isolate the lat too much relative to just kind yeah, of training exactly, the overall yeah. back like you can't especially when you're new it's hard to isolate a specific muscle like that because you don't know what it yeah. feels like so i mean at the start you got to start with the basic movements lat pull down other stuff like that hit the entirety of the back and then obviously you're gonna you're gonna develop the exactly, lats as well yeah. so what would you say for like your top movements based off science for yeah. lats and for overall back well like, what, what yeah you so i mean it kind of depends like for my personal routine i like lat pull downs i mean some people honestly if you can't feel lat pull downs i would not do them because it doesn't really make any sense, but go with what you can feel. For me, I can feel lat pull downs. You need to focus on making sure that you can get your arm back a little and really pull down in your lat. If you can't really feel that, then it's probably not a smart idea, but any movement really, if you're doing a row movement, you really wanna, so one thing is your scapula, which is your shoulder blades. The more that those move, to grow your lats, you really don't need to move those a lot. So sometimes you'll see people like doing a row and they're like, like bringing their shoulders in and out. You don't really need to be doing that for a lat movement. So that's just gonna really like hinder your growth more. So I would say any rows where you're kind of going high to low, that's good as well, even like low to high. And um, 
if you're doing rowing movements for your lats, then just keep your scapula in one spot. It's gonna be a little better. And then also, um, I like, I really like, I take like one cable, and you want to get the cable like in line with your body, and then just like one arm pull downs. I really like those. Yeah, I love those too. Yeah. I say a lot of the things. If you can incorporate like chest supported rows too, yeah, and like chest supported like pull downs or some in some capacity. Like having your chest supported by something just makes the leverage that much better. Yeah, exactly. And there's been a lot of like uh, literature and research out recently that like the more stabilized your body is, the kind of the more beneficial it is. Yeah, definitely. especially when you're new too. Exactly, and especially if you're using your lat, you don't really need to use that lower back as much. Like, exactly. Try to focus on it. And just it's just like all about keeping your core tight and exactly, isolating yeah. your back. So like a good movement that I would do, and you you definitely do it. It's like chest supported rows, obviously. Yeah, or I do like bent over rows. Or bent over rows, still but you're still supported yeah, in some yeah. capacity. And another one is, have you ever done the kneeling rows and you put your you put your waist against the? Uh, you've seen me do yeah, it. Yeah, your waist against the bench yeah, yeah. and a single arm cable. And that's just the same thing, cause right there you don't have to. Really you don't have to move your shoulder, your scapula, yeah, yeah. exactly. So it's just finding different ways like that, like chest supported or trying to find support in some way to stabilize the exactly, movement, yeah. it helps a lot. And, and everybody's different, I mean, you know, like maybe yeah. I'll feel that pull down and some people don't, so really it's like person to person, but yeah. the, the statistics are the same and like the facts are the same, so it's like, and you'll see a lot of people like be like working on their like lower lats or like middle lats, but it's like your lat is one muscle. Yeah. So it's like, it's like you might be able to focus a little and feel it more in one spot, but your whole lat is still getting worked, so you need to still work your whole lat. Yeah. So what would you say, like, would you do one movement for row, <coughs> one movement for pull down? Yeah. Like, what would you do in terms if, of that? If I was picking, like, like one row, I would personally go with the dumbbell row, like just bent over, bent over dumbbell row, row and get that really, really deep stretch, yeah. and then pull really, like, into your lat. So kind of, you're pulling, you want to pull, like, into your hip. Yeah. And that's what you always want to do with your lats, even on, like, a... Like a one arm pull down, you want to pull like straight down. You want yeah. to pull like into your hips. And so, if I was doing one row, I would go with the bent over row. If I could probably pick one lat exercise, well, I mean, obviously lat pull down, but if I couldn't pick lat pull down, then I go bent over row for sure. Yeah. I like bent over rows, and I think that's that's an overall back builder as well. Yeah. Oh, it's not just the lats. It's exactly. like everything. Yeah. yeah. And then what would you do for pull down if you could just throw in a lat pull down, or would you run yeah, the uh, cable would, pull down? I would probably. Just based off feel, I would probably go on the on the underarm, but I love it. But yeah, it's it's pretty nice. <clears throat> Another one that's underrated is pull ups. Like yeah, pull ups I mean, are deadly. Pull -ups are good. I mean, really especially good. if you like them, fucking run the pull ups. Exactly. Like they're awesome. Like it's similar to a lat pull down, but it just body. Exactly. Yeah, and you're getting the most range of motion of your lats. Exactly. You know, so that's what you're going all the way up. Yeah. Yeah. So honestly, like it all comes down to work ethic. Like put the work in, like train hard. Exactly. But yeah. just find, like, go on social media. Find, use our suggestions. Go on social media. Find a good back workout. Exactly. With stuff you like to do. Yeah. Exercises you like to do. You feel, and then just blast the shit at your back. Exactly. And, train hard. and that's the most. That's the most important thing. Like, like I see, I'm. I like to train like optimally, but not really like. I'm not really super optimal. So it's like, like yes, I want to do lab pull downs with perfect form and perfect sets. So I can get like as much lat movement as possible, but I don't really want to like do these crazy like weird angle like pullovers and stuff that might be like a little bit better for my lats. But I know I'm not gonna train that hard. Like when I'm when I'm rolling like the hundred pound dumbbells, like that's fun. Like I'm gonna train a little harder than if I'm like doing a cable like crossover pullover with like twelve pounds. Like I'm not gonna train that hard. No, exactly. It comes back to your preferences. Exactly. It comes back to your your specific anatomy. Exactly. Like we're all if you can train that hard, then do it. Yeah, know? and like if you have to, say your scapula starts to move a little bit towards the end of your set, exactly. and you're forcing a couple more reps. Doesn't I mean, have to be. Perfect. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just obviously use the leverages, exactly. use the stability, try to do and the that, best. And, and that's not to necessarily say that like when you have a scapula movement, you're not growing your lats because you definitely are. But it's, it's just, just optimal. It's just, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, it's just what the reason the back is so hard to train, and not just the lats, the whole back is because there's so many muscles and. If you move your arms a little bit of an angle or your rotator cuffs like a little angle or like your scapula a little angle, it's gonna change the, the back muscles that are work that are worked in that movement. So that's why it's really hard to like specifically focus for a lot of people on, you know, your traps or your rhomboids or your Terry's major or your lats. It's just really hard to focus on those. And that's why some of those compounds are so good too. Because by doing all these optimal lat movements, you're, you're kind of neglecting like the wrong, like so exactly. certain parts of your back. But by doing like bent over rows, you're kind of hitting everything. Like it's not exactly, just, yeah. you're not just isolating 
a certain part of your back. You're, you're developing everything, right? Exactly. Because as a new lift, you don't want to get huge lats and have a tiny, like... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to have, like, a super wide back that is not thick. You need yeah. to have it. You need to have a You need to have a good combination. So, exactly. obviously, mixing the rows, the pull-downs. Exactly. The, like, the, bet, or the pull-overs. Yeah, exactly. Pull-ups. And just, just train to fail. Exactly. Train, train like hell. <clears throat> so, the next thing we're going to talk about here, we're going to have the supplement ashwagandha. So, it's been all over social media. I was always... Yeah. I saw it. I'm like... And there's a big thing with the emotions too, like it's yeah, gonna yeah. take away your emotions. And so I, me and uh, me and Morgan McKinnon, we we both hopped on it. Um, <clears throat> so it's like a herbal um, supplement. It's, like a, root. it's yeah. like a root, yeah. So essentially, what it's supposed to do, it's supposed to decrease your stress levels, and then in doing so, it's supposed to decrease testosterone levels because it. So essentially, the supplement has been proven to to reduce cortisol levels, which is the the human stress hormone levels. And stress is detrimental to muscle growth. Because when you have more stress, your testosterone levels are negatively impacted. They have like a correlation. When your yeah. cortisol levels go down, your testosterone levels are bound to go up in a certain capacity. And I find, honestly, like I've only been on it for like around a month. And I haven't noticed a huge physical difference yet, but I've noticed a huge mental difference. Like normally I deal with like a little bit of anxiety. And I feel like by taking ashwagandha, obviously there's a little bit of placebo, but I feel like it actually has... I mean, it is scientifically proven to reduce cortisol levels, and I feel like it has reduced my perceived stress as well. So I feel like I just feel better on the supplement, and I mean, like I haven't noticed my emotions just fly out of here. Like I still still feel emotion. So definitely, I've I've definitely enjoyed my experience, but not to say not to say you need to hop on. It's like it's not one of those supplements that like creatine. Like it's not exactly. you're not gonna get freaking massive off creatine. It's just gonna help you, right? Exactly. So yeah. it's obviously trying to mix your supplements up, like. Get your vitamin D, get get creatine in, get like all the different vitamins, and then eat well and train yeah, exactly. well. And a lot of those, a lot of this <coughs> stuff too, like you can you can get the vitamins, you can get the supplements from eating what properly. Yeah, too. exactly. I think I think eating properly is a big thing. Like um, a lot of people just like pop a multivitamin and they're like, oh, I'm good, you know. But yeah. It's like, it's like yeah, that's great, but wouldn't it, wouldn't it be a little more satisfying to get all your vitamins from like spinach and like lettuce and yeah. like carrot, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just, in my opinion, whole foods are better, but. Yeah, and like, and all those supplements too, they're not cheap, so if you can't no, afford exactly. to go get creatine or ashwagandha, it's not like, it's not really that detrimental to, yeah. your, to your progress at all. Like I'd say, the ashwagandha I got, it was like nineteen ninety nine. it lasts me a month, so what's that, 240 bucks a year if I want to yeah, stay on exactly. it? So that's not, like, that's not cheap, right? So, cheap. I mean, if you can afford it, go buy it. Yeah, it's exactly. like, there is, a, a noticeable difference on creatine and ashwagandha and certain vitamins, but you don't need them. Exactly. You, you need them in a certain capacity, but you can get them from food. Exactly, and they might it might be different for each person. Yeah, like, oh, 100%. Like, like if, you take, if you take creatine and it does nothing for you, then why are you paying Why would you it? take it? Because, no? yeah, it does have different effects on different people, and that exactly. has been scientifically proven in the literature. Exactly. So if you don't notice a difference in it, don't take it. Exactly, and you, I mean... If you're a person that eats a lot of red meat and you start taking creatine, you notice nothing. Maybe it's because maybe it's because you already hit the saturation level. Exactly. Levels. And uh, yeah, another thing. So creatine works off saturation levels. Ashwagandha not so much. Yeah, exactly. So ashwagandha works in the sense that I mean, it's not it's not the same as creatine. Like creatine, you hit saturation levels and you have to keep like just yeah, supplementing it to get to that too. saturation levels. But ashwagandha doesn't work like that necessarily. Yeah. But yeah, they're both great supplements. Just whether you can actually afford them and. How much of a difference do they actually make? Exactly. You need to make that decision is, is it worth it for me to pay $240 a year for yeah. this? And if you really, really enjoy it, absolutely. And yeah, like if you love bodybuilding, you want that 0.5 to 1% difference, I mean, go for it. Go for it yeah, but yeah. I mean, if you're not going to train hard, like there's no, not really exactly. a point, like it's yeah. not going to do much for you. Exactly. Yeah. And then, I mean, the final thing we could touch on here is, you kind of touched on a little bit, but like, by eating well, you can you can achieve. You can get all these supplements. You can exactly, get all these vitamins. Yeah, not mean, all of them. You can get the most of them you need. Exactly. I mean, there's just so much stuff that it's it's easier nowadays to be like, I'm just gonna stay on protein shake with creatine and like eat a big meal, you know. And it's like it's like you could go eat a big steak and you're probably gonna get the same amount of protein, same amount of creatine. But obviously, like you said, it comes down to like finance. Yeah. Like, do you have enough money to go buy a big steak? Maybe you don't. Protein is probably yeah. cheaper, so it's understandable. But I think it's just. In today's society, there's a lot of like misinformation about how to eat properly, and I think a lot of people don't really know exactly what what they're even eating. No, you, like that's the thing. People eat stuff; they don't even know what they're eating. Like, exactly. it's all about moderation. It's all about eating stuff and like knowing what you're eating at the exactly, end of the day. Yeah. 
I'm not gonna like go call him a liver king with all the bullshit that's going on with yeah, him. Yeah. But I mean, eating certain like like you said, eating meats and yeah. stuff. Like <clears throat> obviously that there is benefits to that. Like you don't yeah. need to cram protein shakes every day. No, if you exactly. get that protein, like there's not really much of a difference between eating protein, having a protein shake, and having a big like having some meat with protein. Yeah. You're actually gonna get more vitamins from the pro from the meat. Exactly. Yeah, and it's like you know you just gotta decide what. What you desire, what works for you, you, what you like more, what you can fit in a daily you, routine. If you are too much of like a food enjoyer and you want to just eat whatever you want to eat, I mean, I understand that, but um, it's gonna cause you health complications. That's yeah, all. and like another thing is like boys will like mock the masking. If you love food, eat food. Like I love food. Exactly. Like you don't eat a masking shake every day, thousand calories. Just exactly. go enjoy the food exactly. in some another capacity. And I mean, masking is not good for you either. Like, no, exactly. It's yeah. full of fillers. It's really just like. Bunch just, of bullshit yeah, and then a little bit of protein. Dirt. Like yeah, it's like So you might as well eat real food. Yeah, you might as well just eat real food, man. I mean a lot of times it's almost cheaper to eat real food. Like <laughs> like you can go buy a huge bag of rice for like twenty bucks that'll last you like three months. Yeah. Or like you're gonna pay like hundred and twenty dollars for like yeah, hundred twenty like, thirty 100, scoops yeah. of like masking or like it's fucked. You're actually getting shit. Like exactly. you're actually getting you're shit like, in the bag a little bit of protein. Like, I'm not joking. Like they're taking like actual <coughs> shit. Like and literally like, just the shittiest, cheapest product. And fillers. Fucking and then throw a little bit of protein powder, and that's your mask. Mask it, really. There it is. Yeah. So honestly, I think that wraps it up for yeah, today. Yeah, thanks for watching, Thanks boys. for tuning in. It's, it's awesome to get back. Yeah, boys are fired yeah, up. we'll be back. Yes, sir.